I want to do a little side-by-side -side demonstration with you here of the kinds of multitasking and capabilities we think are important and how these products compare. This is on the right side of the screen here for all of you. This is uh, the DOS 5 and Windows 3.1 environment. It's running on a PS2 Model 7486 system with lots of memory on your left. We have the exact same system environment, identical hardware, and the difference is we're just running OS 2 2.0. And I want to show you some examples of what we think is important performance. We're going to start up a DOS uh, backup application here. We're going to back up the hard file to disk, something that many users should do more of, actually. And while we do that, we want to switch to another DOS application in the Windows environment. Uh, this is a very simple-minded editor. And we want to try to do some other tasks while that long-running backup is going on in the background. Uh, so let's, we think, I think we've got a microphone over there on the keyboard, and we'll try to do some typing here. It's, uh, it's still moving the window, it's not getting to the keystrokes yet. There we go. Now, there's the keystrokes. We get w totally out of sync here. We get more than 10 keystrokes behind, because in the DOS world, we're, we're sort of limited by the cooperative multitasking that's available, and so if the backup program doesn't give back the CPU to the other applications in the Windows environment, then they can't keep track of what the user wants to do. Now, that's not multitasking that works, okay? Let's look at OS 2 in that very same environment, identical hardware, identical applications. We're going to start the backup in OS 2. And then we're going to, let's move that window around, make sure it, it really does move around. Yeah, it's very interactive and responsive graphically. And uh, let's try some keystrokes over here in this editor. This is the exact same editor, exact same DOS program. And it tracks exactly the keystrokes that the user does. It's completely usable, and the backup is continuing to run very nicely in the background. And because of OS 2's preemptive multitasking capability, even for DOS applications. So you have the ability to know that this application has the focus of the user. It needs higher priority than the backup program. And so it gets it in the OS 2 environment, and it won't in the DOS Windows environment. This is representative of many scenarios that users want to do where they have long-running tasks and yet they still want to be able to get some use out of their system. This is multitasking that really works. Now, some would criticize us for running DOS applications in Windows, so let's run some Windows applications in Windows and see if it's any better. So here's two Windows applications on your right-hand side. This is Omni Professional, again, the word processor I demonstrated earlier. And let's type a little bit on it. Whoops. Okay, and it tracks very nicely. It's got the foreground focus. And uh, next to it here, I've got 123 for Windows. This is the Windows version of 123. And I'm going to start up a macro under 123. Uh, not an uncommon thing where we might have an application that's done as a style of a macro in a spreadsheet. And now I'm going to go back to Ami Professional and try to type. It doesn't work. Okay. Again, because in the macro processing phase, this application doesn't voluntarily give up control in the cooperative multitasking environment, and therefore Omni Pro can't get the cycles it needs to stay up with the user. That's not multitasking that works. Let's look at that exact same scenario on OS2. These are the same applications, again, on the same system and the same hardware. These are the Windows versions of these applications, Omni Professional on the right, and Lotus 123 for Windows on the left. Let's type into Omni Professional. Okay, OS2's interactive response time in Windows applications is just fine, not noticeably different than you would see in DOS Windows. All right, let's start up the 123 macro. This again is the exact same macro. We'll start up the processing. Now these Windows applications are running in their own separate virtual machines and can be preemptively multitasked by OS2, just like the DOS applications were. So there goes the spreadsheet macro, and now I can type. Just like I was. That's multitasking that works. I can let long-running tasks work in the background. I can print. I can back up to disk. I can run Windows applications and OS2 and DOS applications interchangeably, continue to get real work and productivity done 
okay, in the OS2 environment on exactly the same hardware just by changing the operating environment. That's why we say it's real multitasking. <laughs> Multimedia applications place large demands on the system. They are the most stressful applications that we work with now because they need large amounts of data. Audio and video information, motion video information is enormous in size. They need high bandwidths and the ability to manage that information, and they need to be able to carefully synchronize it so that when you hear the voice, it works with the lips, right? And that's very important, okay, for world-class multimedia extensions. Now, great multimedia apps, and I'm going to show you a couple in a minute, need to be able to have the facilities of a preemptive multitasking 32-bit operating system to really be good. Let's look at some of the limitations that we've got in the 16-bit DOS and DOS extended world with multimedia. This is Windows 3.1 again uh, with the multimedia player. And I'm going to start playing a tune, a wave tune here. Uh, and then I'm going to do a couple other tasks. And let's look what happens in the cooperative multitasking environment of DOS and Windows. OK, so I get great sound. That's good. Let's start a little DOS macro up here and see what happens. So I've got another window, another task going on. Perhaps I'm trying to get ready, get some information. I hate to do this, but we, let's start the Excel macro. <laughs> okay. Stops. Okay. Okay. That's not mul that's not multimedia that works. Okay. Uh, and we think it's critically important to build world-class multimedia applications. And we think you need the facilities and capabilities of a product like OS220. So again, on the same exact hardware, the only difference being the operating system software, I have the new 32-bit multimedia player, which we shipped the 32-bit multimedia extensions for OS2 this month, as we had committed we would do. And I'm going to play that same tune here. start the DOS application, the same DOS macro, and I'm going to start the same Excel macro. And that's multimedia that works. Okay. Because again, OS2 is preemptive multitasking. It's flat 32-bit memory model. lets us manage the amount of information that needs to be managed in the system and keep the priorities of the audio flowing to the adapter so that there's no missing elements. 